Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Paloma, and on behalf of the Radiant Group, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all once again to India's biggest wellness conclave, the Radiant Wellness Conclave, in its sixth edition. Can we start with a big, big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? The theme for this year is the power of possibilities through the nine dimensions of wellness. So what I'm going to do is have all of you say this with me. The power of possibilities. Just say that to yourselves once. Doesn't that have a beautiful ring to it? Try it once again, but close your eyes and envision what that means for you. Pick any dimension of wellness. Now close your eyes and say it once again. The power of possibilities. Can we try that a little louder? One last time. The power of possibilities. Try, ladies and gentlemen. So I just love the ring that it has to it. You're picturing a future where anything is possible. Which brings me to the point of this conclave. One of the things I love every year is the amount of knowledge that is shared. It's a wealth of knowledge and the insights that are exchanged. And of course, none of this would have been possible without two very, very important people. This is a meticulously put together event with an amazingly impressive array of speakers year on year. And I have to, of course, mention who curated this event. The founders themselves, our patrons, the beautiful Dr. Renuka David and Colonel David Devasahayam. Let's have you all stand up and you know, do a little wave to the audience, a little bit of drama. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can call them Chennai's darlings for bringing this beautiful event to the city. So thank you so, so very much. One of my favorite parts of this event is how much I learn every single year. I go home, I do a little bit more research based, based on what I've learned. And then I love telling people, did you know this? Did you know that? You know, I heard this amazing talk and that's what they said. So at the end of today, that's what I'm most excited about is all of the knowledge that I'm going to take back home with me. Of course, I would like to invite Colonel David Devasahayam on stage, but before that, he will officially welcome you all. I would like to say a few words about him and the Radiant Group of Companies. An alumnus of the NDA, Colonel David has had a long and illustrious career as a high-profile infantry officer from the 2nd Battalion of the 8th Gorkha Rifles. During his service, he commanded two Assam Rifles battalions and an army training center. A brilliant professional who has seen the thick and thin of it all while serving in active insurgency areas, he is also an alumnus of the prestigious Harvard Business School. On voluntary retirement, he has set up the enormously successful Radiant Group of Companies, and it has five verticals in the fields of cash management, guarding services, medical services, business solutions, and content creation. Radiant Cash Management Services went public at the beginning of the year. Congratulations on that. Yes, a round of applause, absolutely. And Colonel David has the distinction of being the only ex-armed forces officer in the history of India to have bootstrapped and taken his company public in a short span of 17 years. In fact, it was the first company to go public this year. Successfully listed at a premium during a volatile market, it has over 27,000 stakeholders. The Radiant Group has regional offices across the country in all state capitals and employs thousands of personnel. It also has offices in the US. The group is deeply into corporate social responsibility activities of destitute management and the education of underprivileged students. Poverty alleviation by employment generation is the motto of the Radiant Group of Companies. And today, this deserves a round of applause. They employ over 11,000 personnel. <laughs> Colonel David is the recipient of the National Entrepreneur of the Year in the field of security services, the Socially Conscious Entrepreneur of the Year, and the Udyog Ratna by the Government of India. He was also felicitated for being amongst the top 100 emerging business leaders of Asia at Singapore. 
Last year, he was felicitated in the House of Lords, the UK Parliament, for entrepreneurial excellence. And I now invite Colonel David Devasahayam to please come up on stage to officially welcome you all. Let's give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Paloma. Good morning, dear friends. I was just wondering whether she was talking about me or somebody else. Well, very kind words. But with each passing year, individual wellness, both globally and in India, finds itself facing new challenges, adopting new trends, and coping with the new world order. At the Radiant Wellness Conclave, we have always endeavored to mirror these changes and stay relevant to the times with our themes, ideas, and speakers. We have conducted very successful, five very successful editions, right from our inception in 2015 up until 2019. Each edition, like the sixth one today, has been a day-long event carefully curated by a founder of this conclave, Dr. Renuka David, who handpicks a selection of eminent speakers from across the country. This conclave bears her stamp of commitment to this endeavor conceived by her in 2015. Let me clearly state that without her single-minded devotion, this endeavor would not have been possible. So therefore, as an acknowledgement of her spirit, it is time to reminisce by looking at the conclaves gone by. Ever Wellness Icon Award. The one stumbling block becomes the choice, the hard choice that she has to make, which is I'm a mother and I have to sacrifice five to seven years of my career. The problem is when society at large defines that beauty gives us the parameters of beauty and says, this is beautiful. In the end, it was all just acceptance, being able to accept what I can do and what I cannot do. In this beautiful country of ours, and I'm a living testimony, you don't have to stay where you are. Suppose you want to transit, you can. But at that point of time, look for inspirational stories. I never thought that I would ever get to fly in space. We realize that physical wellness gives you a sense of confidence, it gives you a sense of achievement, and no matter which path you take in life. Yes, the trunk of the tree is visible to our eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, the crown of the tree is visible to our eyes, but the roots of the tree, which are underneath the soil, which are invisible to our eyes, is our inner development. So it's drink your food and chew your water. So I said, what do you mean by that? They said, take a piece of spelled bread, Chew it 40 times at least, till it becomes liquid. In Britain today, Indian curry houses as they're called, Indian restaurants in Britain, employ more people than the coal mining, iron and steel and shipbuilding industries combined. Your competition is only with yourself. You have to trust in yourself. You just cannot Compare yourself with anyone else because there's nobody else comparable when you believe in your cause. Unless I have a very high fever, I play tennis and everything goes away. For girls, I would say the courage is very important and the willingness to uh, say no to those people and to those attitudes which say that you cannot do it. 
today we're talking about so many things we're talking about economy we're talking about uh, growth beyond all that there is a larger threat that is the threat of environment wellness i think as we all know is an inside job it's an inside job but if we can radiate wellness and actually share it with others and there was vikram who's lying in a coffin on a tricolor and my father is instructing me that you let the fire and that day the fear of death went away from me is what i learned from vikram boss so if you truly want to feel intellectually well it's to feel satisfied that you at least tried to pursue your dreams as you can see quite a journey but after 2019 we had to hit the pause button for a couple of years much like the rest of the world as the covid-19 pandemic engulfed us so we went digital instead presenting the conclave online this year we restored the physical format and the response and interest that we see has been phenomenal It feels good to know that we are remembered, missed and anticipated. And our key focal areas have always been the nine dimensions of wellness. And this year as well, our discussions and speaker sessions will emphasize this focus. Dr. Renuka will helm a conversation on emotional wellness with actor director Revathi who needs no introduction. She is a master storyteller and a director who tackles complex emotional subjects with sensitivity. Early in the day, she will also have a discussion with Dr. Sri Ram Nene on health and current trends in healthcare. We also have Major General Vikram Dogra, who will be in conversation with our own firebrand, inspirational journalist Barkha Dat. on physical wellness interestingly major dogra is the only person from india to have completed the iron man challenge while still serving as a general in the army former yeah that's at the age of 54 former vice chief and northern army commander Lieutenant General Devraj Anbu and the former 15 Corps commander Lieutenant General J S Sandhu will together address the burning topic of occupational wellness in a challenging profession like the army in a fireside chat again with Barkha. We will also have a very engaging speech on intellectual wellness by Dr. Palnivel Tyagarajan Minister of IT and digital services of tamil nadu while conscientious journalist fade azuza will be speaking about environmental wellness i have always believed that to be Im really impactful we have to look to the future of wellness not just the present going by current requirements there are three c's at the heart of urban wellness community customization and connection the first is community earlier this year at the one earth one health conference our prime minister mr narendra modi indicated that true progress in wellness happens when it is completely available to the underprivileged in a speech i really love these words and i quote the once in a century pandemic reminded the world of a number of truths it showed us that in a deeply connected world borders cannot stop threats to health at a time of crisis 
the world also saw how countries in the global south had to face difficulties and even denial of resources. We all saw that happen. True progress is people-centric, no matter how many advances are made in medical science, access must be assured to the last person at the last mile. The last person at the last mile, that is our global aspiration. Another radiant group, we also believe that for society to flourish and progress, wellness must be truly inclusive. Over the years, we have consciously aimed to keep registrations to our conclave free and open to everyone, students, corporates, individuals and the armed forces, the only criteria being a willingness to listen, learn and implement those learnings for a healthier body, mind and overall society. Our hope is that this community of like-minded people will carry the underlying message of wellness to a wider audience. In keeping with that thought, we are also live webcasting the conclave due to the limited seats in this hall and I am told we already have a live viewership running into thousands. A big hi to all of you watching us live at this moment. And as I was told, especially to the 56 alumni group, thanks for watching. The second C is customization. Today there is no one size fits all in any aspect of healthcare or wellness. You have smart watches that can assess your BMI, how much activity you get in a day, what your resting heart rate is, and so many other metrics. Devices don't just belong in doctors' clinics anymore. They have made it to our homes. This is from the consumer's perspective. From the point of view of hospitals and healthcare providers, a lot of them use artificial intelligence as a diagnostic tool or an aid to find quicker, better and more customized solutions. I think this is going to be a game changer in the wellness industry going forward. The conclave has always recognized the importance of technology and future grazing and we have a very interesting session with serial tech entrepreneur Raju Venkatraman of Medal fame who will be addressing this topic in further detail in a few minutes from now. The third C is connection. The pandemic showed us that we don't live in a bubble. We have reached a stage in our lives when everything is interconnected. We have to find ways of blending wellness into every aspect of our lives, our jobs, finances, our emotional well-being, intellect and so on. And this is where the nine dimensions of wellness come into play, which has always been a key area, area of focus. Money and wellness have long been looked at as separate entities. However, this is not necessarily true. Your financial stability can impact all other aspects of your health. Digital wealth management firm Scriptbox conducted a survey which revealed that 90% of Indians believe that financial wellness has an impact on their well-being. Thicker wallets can lead to better nutrition levels, health insurance policies and pay hospital bills. So how do you attain financial wellness? Well, we have a fabulous panel of startup entrepreneurs. The most necessary thing in our country are new, vibrant startups. So startup entrepreneurs led by the convener of the conclave, Priya Gautam, who will deep dive into this topic. One of the major contributors and mentors of the last two editions of our conclave, conspicuous by his absence here today, has been the erudite scholar and speaker, Dr. Shashi Tharoor. 
This year, he was elevated to the Congress Working Committee and they have their first meeting today. Otherwise, he would have been here with us. But he sent a nice message. Hello, this is Shashi Tharoor. Greetings and best wishes to all those attending the Radiant Wellness Conclave. I was expected to be here myself and I apologize profoundly that a long-standing commitment for many months had to be cancelled at the last minute. I think many of you know that the Congress Party's Working Committee is meeting on the very same dates and I have just been made a member of it and I will have to attend my very first meeting of the committee. The Conclave, however, is also in a very different way, very close to my heart. It was founded in 2015. I was amongst uh, 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 the early friends of Colonel uh, David Devasaheim and, and, and Mrs. David. And um, when I found that they were doing so much to address the different dimensions of urban wellness, um, I became part of the Conclave from 2018. Uh, and I was very happy to be associated also um, in an advisory role with it, in addition to participating and speaking myself. In 2020, of course, COVID struck and for two years it didn't take place, but it has been resumed this year and I was looking forward very much to being part of the 2023 Radiant Wellness Conclave until circumstances prevented me from attending. I want to send my very best wishes to all of you. I hope you have fruitful, constructive discussions. May it be a terrific and successful conclave. Jayant. The power of possibilities is a theme very close to our hearts. It allows us to see the future in a new and transformative way. This doesn't just start and end with positive thinking. You can't just envision the power of possibilities and wait for them to happen organically. You need to act upon it. No matter where you are in your life, at the lowest ebb or the highest high, there are always possibilities within your reach that can help create a better and healthier future. Work towards your goals systematically and stay true to your path. Who better to exemplify this than our Lifetime Achievement Awardee, the very vibrant Usha Otop. We heard her last evening and I think her ears are still reverberating with the sound of her vibrant voice. She has always been a path breaker with a rich, deep singing voice, her verve and individuality. We will also be presenting the The Awards during the course of the day. This will celebrate winning individuals and institutions in the areas of technology, health, and environment. We have a panel of very accomplished jury members who have spent long hours perusing each and every application that came in. The aim is to celebrate unsung heroes who are contributing to society and to the economy with their entrepreneurial ventures.